Hey guys, thanks so much for watching part one of our engine video. Part two is gonna focus just a little bit more on the process, exactly what your engine goes through from start to finish at top speed through Kazi. So we bring the car in here, we disassemble the car completely. When the engine and the heads go to Kazi, they look something like these do right over here. You got just an engine, an, en a, an engine number, heads and head number. Those heads and head number and the, the engine number, they're associated with a build. All of the build details are in that sheet. Everything you need to know about what it's getting, a billet crank, a stock crank, what rods, what pistons, how much power the car is gonna make so we know what to do as far as ring bearing, cl or bearing clearances and uh, ring gaps and, and other items like that. And what cams are going in it, what valves, if there's valves going in it, all of that stuff goes with a build sheet from here, again, 30 minutes away, uh, couriered by one of our staff and dropped off usually in a few in bulks of a few engines they then do what they do best and they assemble they do the detailed assembly of the short block and the heads themselves and that only why because that's what they do best we are the ones that know what turbos to put on it to make a certain amount of power what what down pipes what exhaust needs to be on it what injectors need to go to support how much boost we're going to run how much timing we're going to run all of that. Most of those guys have never even sat in a GTR, much less, had, or driven one, much less built one. None of them have ever built one. So we are the experts behind the process and what it needs, but they're the experts behind the actual machine work, the finite details of the machine work. They have the facility to do it. As you can see in the, in the first video, they have the tools to do it. So it comes back here with a build sheet, every single detail of the build itself, all the clearances, Everything is exactly how it's set and what was put in it via our order, just like this, tagged with a customer so we know exactly what it is and then filed so that we can look at it later in case of uh, any issues. We then take it from there to here to there and ultimately to there. So then what you get is you get over a decade of experience of us building GTRs and then you get 50 years of experience of these guys building the specifics inside your engine. Because that's, as you could see from the video uh, that we shot earlier, that's what they do, and that's all they do, and that's what they do best. So we outsource to them, we let them supply us with what we feel is one of the best engines uh, you can buy for a GTR, and then we assemble it for you. Another thought process that I wanted to kind of bring you guys in on is the ability to control and understand start to finish what goes on with a product. I personally don't believe there's any way to quality control a product when different people are doing little sections. So that's one thing that I'm very proud of and very passionate about here. But a lot of places around the world, around the United States, in our industry and in others, the engine gets shipped then to a shop or to somebody else. That person puts another company's heads on it and then they fly in a tuner to tune it. And then when all hell breaks loose, everybody's going like this because nobody has seen the start to the finish. Well, that's one problem. The bigger problem is how do you increase the level of reliability in that type of situation? You can't because the engine builder can't see the tune. He also can't make sure that the guy that was tightening down the pickup tube on the oil pump did it correctly. And nobody is going to want to give, to, to take the blame on, hey, this, is, this was our deal, or very rarely. Where in our situation, there is no, oh, he did it so. Oh, that guy tuned it so. Oh, he probably detonated it. And that was the problem. So I can't, you know, either stand behind it or make it better next time. And that's the real thing. Every single one of our engines, whether it's our race engines, our top level race engines, like in my car and the Christmas's car and, and other billet block cars like Spackman's, or whether it's down to the, to the uh, customer that's just getting a, a, a very mild 3.8 build with a stock crank maybe, all of them, I know from start to finish what the bearing clearances were, how hard the tune was pushed, what events it did, how often the guy bought oil change packages from us, I can I see it all. I see the whole picture. So when there's a failure, I'm not looking at this person or that person. I'm not calling this engine builder saying, hey, why did your engine blow up? No, that's not what's happening. 
We share information 100% seamlessly between obviously my in-house tuner who works for me and this machine shop who also work with me and for me to make sure that all of the quality stays uh, up as tip top as it possibly can. And when something fails, because if nothing's failing, you're not doing it right, you're not pushing hard enough, then we make it better. We don't point the finger at the tuner. We don't point the finger at the engine shop. We don't do that. We don't tell the, it dropped a valve and we call the guy that made the heads, oh, you know, that's all done here. And it's all our product. So when I bring in a failed engine, my technicians take it out of the car, we go through it, we take it all apart, we make sure everything we see, we write down or take pictures of. I bring that file, I come here with the engine in a truck, and I stand here and with the owner of the machine shop, John Kazi, my dedicated staff members here, and we talk through it, and we try to figure out how to make it better, because nobody's pointing fingers at each other. Everybody's working together to make the product better for our end user. And I just feel like there's so much authority in that, and I've seen that over the course of the years. When you don't have an engine builder that has his own prerogatives and objectives to be able to, to hide and to make sure he's protected, and a shop that's got their own, that is, that's just a huge deal. It makes it so that our product gets better and better and better and better with every single little nuance, every single failure, anything we go through, we go through it together, nobody points fingers, we all come together and we make the product better for the customer the next time around. And then it happens again and again and again and again. And as you build that over the course of the years that we have, you end up with so much authority, so much group knowledge that there's nothing you can't tackle. And that's something I'm very proud of and something I think is very misjudged and misunderstood in the industry, where you can just get an engine from anybody and you can just do this or do that. There is not authority in taking it all the way to the end, seeing all aspects of it, and then when something goes wrong, making it better. So that the next time, it takes that extra 100 horsepower, that extra 200 horsepower to create a completely different failure, and then you go after that one and figure out how to fix it. And it's something I'm very proud of and something we've worked very hard at with this particular machine shop. And it's also one of the reasons you can't call them and get one of my engines, so don't try. All right, kind of to piggyback about what I said in the assembly room here. This isn't the shiny assembly room, but this is what I would call the, the graveyard or the nuts and bolts of making sure that things are made better as we see failures or we reach limits. Um, if you look kind of behind me, you'll realize like this block is cut in half. Well, because we probably had a failure where we thought, hmm, we need to see how deep the head stud hole goes and if we can go a little deeper with it. Or where's the water jacket end in this one? Or we had this little issue where this twisted a little bit. Can we make it any stronger? And so we cut the block in half. Try to figure out where that can happen and how we can make it better. There's days and days and weeks and months of stuff that we do here that we don't, the end user doesn't see the price. We just do it to make sure that our next engine is better than the last. And every single time we see a weakness or every single time we see an endpoint, we don't just put it back together the same way that it was and just hope it doesn't happen again because we hope the tuner doesn't turn it up too much or we hope that the guy assembling the, it this time tightens the oil feed line. No, 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 no. No, because all of that is all encompassed in one umbrella company. We all work together with no secrets and we make it better next time without pointing fingers and without, without trying to make excuses as to why it may have failed and why there's somebody else to blame. We harness it and we make it better for the customer for the next time over and over and over again.